Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Azure DevOps training. So in the previous session, we saw how to create an organization in Azure DevOps. So in this one, we are going to see how to create a project. All right. So I will, I don't have a, like, you know, a broader agenda for this. So let's just go ahead and log into Azure DevOps. I've already logged into my Azure DevOps account. If you want to uh, actually practice creation of project along with me, then you can log into your Azure DevOps or you can just keep on watching the video and you can do it later. All right. So I am in my Azure DevOps account. And if you remember, this was my default organization. And this is the organization that I created in the previous session. All right. Now in this particular organization, I'm getting this option to create a project. All right. So in order to create a project, you can provide a project name. So uh, we can say demo project one. All right. Uh, and then there are two options. You can keep your project public or you can keep it as private. So public means that anybody who has access to internet, right? They will be, and if, you, if they know the URL of your project, they can actually directly go and access your project. All right. And if you have kept it private, then they will not be able to access your project. So for me, this option is not available. Uh, hold on. Public projects are disabled for your organization. You can turn on the public visibility by, so we can turn on the public visibility by changing the organization policy. So this is the organization. Let's just go to organization settings quickly. And it is asking that you can change it in the organization policies. So I'll go to policies and see if that option is available or not. And here it is, right? Allow public projects. Let me just turn it on and save it. So now I can actually create a public project. So I'll go back here and now I will fill out the information demo uh, project one. Okay. And then let's just go ahead and make it public. Okay. And you also have another option here of advanced. So here it is showing you the option for version control and work item process. So in version control, you have two options. One is Git and another is team foundation version control. So if you are using source code, then you can uh, use Git over here. All right. So I'm using Git. And then here in work item process, so there are four options, agile, basic, CMMI and scrum. So for now I'm going ahead with basic, but don't worry. I'm going to create separate separate videos on all these other uh, three work item process. So you will get to know that what are the differences. Basically, this is going to set the process, like, you know, whatever the process, the default process that Azure DevOps will be creating for you, that will depend on whatever the work item process you have created. Okay. So for now, let's just keep it basic, right? And then click on create project. So here you can see the moment I created the project, it has given me a set of options on the left side, right? So these are the features that are available for the project. So if I click on overview, I can see that like, you know, this is, this is the project and it is showing me that what are the services that are available here. Then I have something as dashboards. So basically these things are going to be blank for now because I haven't created anything. For example, you can see the dashboard is blank. Uh, boards is also going to be blank. Like, you know, everything under the boards as uh, backlogs, print queries, delivery, del delivery plans, repos and pipelines, because we haven't set up anything, right? We just created a new project. So everything is going to be blank in this. So we are going to learn about these things when we actually do our uh, demo on these topics. All right. So for now, let's just go ahead and check what are the options that are available in the project settings. Okay. Because we already saw how to create a project. Now let's just check out project settings and do not worry about these things. We will learn about these things when we actually go ahead and set up each and every, um, like, you know, like basically like, you know, do our demo on each and every feature. All right. So I'll just go ahead and click on project settings. So here you can see that again, like, you know, it is similar to the organization settings. We have few option avail options available on the left panel. We have journal, boats, pipelines, repos, artifacts, and test. All right. So under, we are only going to actually overview the options that are available under journal and nothing else from here because we have not set up anything as I said, right? So let's just only check out the journal option. So in overview, you can change the basic details of the project. You can change the name of the project. You can provide a description. And this is the pro uh, process that we had selected, right? While creating the project and in the visibility, you can keep it as public or you can like, you know, change it to private. And uh, this, this option, let me just show you something. Okay. So let's say if I copy this URL now, because I have kept it public, right? Let me open a incognito window and I'll try to open this URL. Okay.
hold on because I am actually going to the settings. Let me go to the project and copy this and let me try to open it here. Here you can see that even though I have not logged in here, right, but I'm able to access the project because I have kept the visibility as public. Okay. If I switch the visibility, let's just go and switch the visibility. If I switch it to private and let's just save it. If I go back here and if I refresh this, it will ask me to sign in. Okay. So this is the difference between public and private. I'm going to keep it as public. All right. And then next we have project administrator. So uh, for now, I am the only user in this particular like you know, account, dev account. That is why it is showing my name. But if you want to give the admin access to other people, you can add multiple admins over here. Okay. And these are the services that are that it is showing that which we have kept on uh, boards, repos, pipelines, test plans and artifacts. Okay. So again, in the settings, okay, let me open a duplicate tab and I'll show you. So let's say I'm on the project. <clears throat> And these are the options that are available, right? Overview, summary, dashboard, um, boards, repos, and pipelines, test plans, and artifacts. So these things are available because these services are on. Let me go ahead and switch off one of these services, okay? So let's say if I switch off the repos, okay? And here, if I if I refresh, this, this, will, this will disappear, all right? So you can see the repos option is gone, okay? So from here, you can basically control that what are the services that you're going to provide to the project, okay? Because as an admin, you might not be uh, like, you know, allowed to give each and every services to a particular team or to a particular project. So this is where you can actually control these services, okay? So the next, what we have is delete the project. If you want to delete the project, you can also just click on delete and you can delete this particular project, all right? The next thing is teams. So basically, whatever project we have created, it initially it creates a default team with the same name. So now the project name is demo project one. So you can see that it has created a default team for me. If I want to create a new team, I can do that as well. Okay. Because in a single project, if the project is very big, there might be multiple teams who are working on different threads of the project, right? So that is where you would actually need to create different teams. Okay. So let's say if this is one team that has been created, if you click on this particular team, you will be able to add extra users again, as I'm the only user in this particular account right now. So it has added me by default, but you can add extra users over here in this particular team. Okay. So this is the option. And uh, you, if you want to delete it, remove it, you can select this and you can remove this particular team and sorry, this particular user or uh, like, you know, if you want to add a new user, you can add from here. All right. So this is what is available under teams. And if you go to permissions, these are few options that are available for permission. Let's say if there's a new group. Okay. Again, we have not discussed about a group, but let's just keep the concept in mind. So if you want to give access to a particular group, you can uh, actually create a group from here, or you can like, you know, remove those groups from like, you know, because these are added by default. That is why it is not showing me the option to remove. But let's say if I uh, want to give access to a new group, then I can do that as well from here. Okay. And similarly, if there are users, so here again, as I'm the only user here, right? So that is why it is showing me. But if there are extra users and you're not seeing any other options available here because I just have one user. But if there are multiple users, there would be other options that will be available that if you want to like, you know, it will basically show you that which and all users are there in the system and who actually has the permission to this particular project. All right. So it is just listing down all the users who has the permission to this project. All right. And if you, again, if you want to remove some projects, you need to go to teams and you can just remove the users from the teams where you have added the users, right? You added the member members from here, you click on the team and from here you can add extra members. Okay. And from here you will be able to remove those members. All right. So, Okay, so this is just showing us the groups and users access permission access. And again, coming back to the notifications. So the same thing that we discussed for um, organization notifications, right? The same option is available for a project notifications. So if you want to notify users on all of these activities, you can basically turn that a uh, particular service on okay if you want to notify if you want to send an email notification to a user whenever the build completes in azure devops you can keep it on if you keep it off then whenever the build completes there will be no email no notifications which will be actually triggered to the users all right so the same way this particular email notification 
services available for each and every activity. You can see right for build completed, for pull request, for extensions, for approval pending, manual validation and all of these activities, right? So you can keep it on and keep it off based on your requirement, all right? The next one is service hooks. Again, we have not done any kind of integrations over here, but in the like, you know, in upcoming videos, when we actually do these activities or like, you know, perform any kind of do any kind of demonstration on this one, then we will like, you know, ex discuss this. Okay. So that we can understand better on that. Okay. And then we have something called as dashboards. So here you can see that these three options are available. Okay. And every time whoever you have assigned as an admin, okay, only those people are going to have these options available. Okay. Because only an admin can create a dashboard, edit a dashboard and delete dashboard. But if you want to give those permissions to other members, then you have to specifically give those permissions to those members. Okay. But by default, these options are going to be available for admin, because if you go back to overview, okay. Well, whoever, whoever you have added as an admin, right? Those people will have these three accesses. Okay. So these are the general settings of a project. All right. And uh, so we saw how to create a organization. And then we also saw how to create a project. We saw the general settings of project. We also saw the general settings of an organization. And then we also now know that there are few services that are available for a project. So don't worry about this. We will discuss these in details. And we also saw how to delete a project, right? You just need to go to project settings, scroll down to the end, and you will have that option of deleting the project. All right. And now let's say if you already have like, you know, created projects and you need to find out that which project is where, then you can go back to the organization and where, wherever you will go, it will show you all the available projects. For example, in demo sample org when I have created this project, so it is showing me this project. If I create another project, okay, let me just do it. Um, project two, and then let's just keep it private. Click on create. All right. And again, if I go back to the organization, you can see that it is showing me two projects. All right. So similarly, if I, if you have multiple organizations, so, and if you want to navigate to a project, then you should first know that which organization does it belong to. Okay. So that you'll be able to navigate to the project. And if you want to go to the project overview, just click on the project and you will reach here. All right. And here also you can see that it is showing you the visibility of the project. All right. So about these things we will discuss in like, you know, uh, future videos, upcoming videos that what is a board, what is a repo, how to set up a pipeline and how to, of course, like, you know, commit and push code. I know that you guys would be waiting for that mainly because in if you are not actually totally involved into a DevOps team, but you still as a developer, if your project is using Azure DevOps, then as a developer, you still need to know how to commit and push your code to Azure DevOps. All right. So don't worry about those things. I will cover each and every topic in the upcoming sessions, but in project creation, that's it for now. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.